Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Top 2 Talk. This week, we're going to start with Rodri, the nicest man in football, turning into an absolute criminal with a straight red card against Nottingham Forest. It did win 2-0, it didn't hinder the result or the team, but Rodri has gone from the nicest guy in football to, as it stands, currently at this moment in time, the biggest thug in football. So, did either of you two see it, or watch any of the highlights, or, or any of that? Moment of madness from him. Uh... To be fair, that game just further showed how strong City are because if he didn't get sent off there, they probably would have won like 7 nil again or something like that. Uh, even with the red card, they were comfortable, didn't concede, kept a clean sheet. Clean sheets are not easy to keep in the Premier League. A lot of teams are struggling and City did it with 10 men. And the only, I think, big problem with Roger being sent off is he's going to miss Arsenal. Um, so that's fun. Um, hopefully that gives someone a chance to beat City because they haven't dropped a point yet. But in terms of also with Man City, as you said, he's going to miss the Arsenal game. So is De Bruyne. De Bruyne is still not yeah, fit. But I, I don't Obviously, really know how much like going to miss. I know he's their best player. What but you, but, Alvarez but, is in, coming brilliant. But if you're talking Arsenal games, it always seems to be De Bruyne tears Arsenal apart. He just turns up, whether it's at the Etihad or the mm. Emirates. He turns True. up. And that's going to be two big misses for City. Obviously, I know you touched on Alvarez and we touched on him last week as well. Um, but... That's a counter point, man. Rice obviously went off injured yesterday, so that could be two big DMs out of the game. And Saka yeah. was injured as well, but you know, I don't know how big their injuries are, but could obviously go back into City's face. It probably will, but got like 15 first teams, haven't they? And before we move on, uh, it's a weekly occurrence, whether it's UCL, League Cup, FA Cup, or Premier League, or even international. Um, Haaland scored another goal. So, <laughs> we had yeah. UCL as well, actually. For yeah. Now. Arsenal won 4 0. Yeah, but yeah. We'll, we'll move on to we'll, we'll do the end and then we'll uh, we'll do the UCL. We'll the obviously round up at the end, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so congratulations to Luton for getting their first point. Hopefully it's their first one. Um Wolves. You mean their last one. Yeah, <laughs> their last. yeah, first and last. But <laughs> you, you know what I meant. But yeah, yeah. last I mean, have to be, be against ten men. They should be winning that game though, if they're ten men. They should be against ten men. They should yeah, run a Dino meme, just licking my lips. No, but they, they've accepted mediocrity, so that one point is huge for them. They've already accepted they're being relegated, and we're only at the start of the season. So. In, in their eyes, one one down, ten to, uh, 11 to go, just so they don't break the record. But I'm hoping it's nine yeah. more points for them, if they are going to get any more. Um, mm. Shock result, to be fair, Brentford won Everton three. Uh, I did I, watch that, actually. I did yeah. watch that. Um, well, I played shock. to Everton. Yeah, no, took a full advantage. Everyone was saying, like, Everton... No, the relegation can They still are, obviously, but it's a big win for them to get their campaign running. And Calvert Lewin finally scored after his injury troubles. It was nice to see him score from a mm-hmm. footballing point of view. Where, where was it? His, did you see his dad on Twitter? Was it a month ago when he went off, come on and went off injured again? He tweeted basically saying it was heartbreaking seeing his son doing what he's trying to do, what he loves, and the people of like his fans and stuff like that constantly slating him. It's nice to see him come back. Obviously, I know he hasn't had the greatest of careers or the greatest of, of luck with injuries. It's nice to see him score. Mm-hmm. Um, big, big but moving on to the late, late, late kickoff on Saturday. Uh, Burnley nil, Manchester United won. Chavez, take it away. Mm. Yeah, um, we're playing in a different formation because we don't have right wingers because they're criminals. Uh, so this new formation, I think the team's just getting by. One thing I will say is Hannibal played, and Hannibal playing gave Casemiro some respite. And because of that, Casemiro put in his best performance of the season. Um, just because we have extra runners and because Ericsson provides the... Ericsson is half a player on the pitch off the ball and Hannibal was one player at least. So that was really helpful. You could genuinely tell the difference in the field. Aside from that, we don't... Again, Burnley played better than us. They played us off the park at times, but um, I'm not going to judge this team until we see a first eleven or somewhere near a first eleven because every single player in that back four was not a starting player. Shout out to Johnny Evans, who came in after so many years and just... He was really good. His first start in so long, and he was the one player who was looking for long passes at times, and one actually worked and gave Bruno the chance to produce the best moment of the game. The, the, I think there was a massive gap in terms of quality, and Bruno, that one moment was about two leagues ahead of anything else that was produced in the game was by any player finish. from both teams. Yeah, and he just he did it. So fair play to him. Anana made a couple of important saves, but I did say that anything would have been an improvement on his mistake at the Allianz. So yeah, a good good result. I mean, to... For Anana, personally, I think a clean sheet will do him. Clean sheet will do him good. I mean, like fair play to him for coming out for that interview. We'll talk about obviously the UCL after, but 
the Bruno guy, as you said, like his class is showing his levels above everyone else on the pitch. And <clears throat> even though Bernie did play off the, the part, and we'll obviously bring him to Chelsea after, it's a results business and you guys got the win. So no one's going to care about how you played. It's the three points that matters really, doesn't it? And that's what's probably good about yeah, Ten Hag, isn't it? So he gets the points, he gets the wins, even though he's not playing well. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was going to say, congr- oh, I say congratulations, that's the wrong word. But Burnley played well. Burnley were unlucky. To, if Bruno didn't score right on the stroke at half-time, which it was, it was in injury time, wasn't it? If I remember correctly. Mm. It, they go at half-time, nil-nil. They've got to be going, we can get something here comfortably. They had two or three brilliant chances. Even mm. um, They're just kind of lacking that kind lack of, of quality. Sorry, that's, that's quality player. I think obviously, they're striking. That's, that's, obviously, low, you t- low, yeah. Low, you can't remember his name. Lyle Morris or something like that? Is that the striker? Mm. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously you two haven't been there being top six, but it is hard, especially Ireland from Watford fan coming up. There's a massive gap even between the top 15, which obviously puts you into the bracket, the bottom five. It's usually West Ham have been flirting with it, Everton have been flirting with it. And then the three teams that come up as it stands, obviously with the gap with the other teams that have been in the Premier League for so long. Even you look at like now your Newcastle being bought out and your Brightons and your Villas, they've all moved up to sort of top eight, top nine. So it does make it hard. Um, but also I have just a to, question after, sorry. To I, was just, I, was, I was going to say, just to touch on just a last thing as well. I aimed at Chavez for all, really. Um, obviously, Amir touched on it with Ten Hag getting results. But how long can you go on for just Ten Hag playing this sort of football with the players that he's, or the, the squad? Until he gets his players back. Until he gets his players back. If, if, yeah, if, we it, don't. If, it, if it carries on, do you reckon that's when it's his time? If he carries yeah, on. Yeah, because got... there was a time we had our first 11. I know it's unrealistic to have a first 11, but I think with one or two injuries, we're okay. When you have five, I would say five starting players missing right now, it's Who's really missing hard. right now? It's our group. So wan is our starting right back, regardless of how good the low plays. Varane, Martinez and Luke Shaw. And then we're, we're missing, we're not playing a right winger because we're having to play an extra midfielder. You could even argue then that Amrabat didn't start, so that's another position where... There you go. If that's Mason, that's... Mason Mount as well. Yeah, there's just so much like missing, and then we don't actually have anything off the bench really when when it comes to that type of situation. So I'm more than happy for him to be finding out results in this situation. Obviously, the questions will be asked when we actually have a first eleven, but we showed it last year. We had a very good period where we beat Man City at Old Trafford. We went unbeaten. We were winning all our games up until that club final, which we also won, and that was when we had our first eleven. And then the injuries kicked in after that. Um, so yeah. So he's got enough time to to turn it around or to to actually get him playing, as you said, it's his first team. Pressure. I don't think he's under pressure. Oh, he's under zero percent pressure. I think surely now the owners realise that this is not how to deal with sacking or whatever the, the option is. It's not going to be the case with Man United because who do you get next? The next person will also be sacked. So yeah. Well, we'll move on to Sunday's games now. Um, Liverpool three, West Ham one, and Brighton three, Bournemouth one. Um, Brighton keep on winning three one. <laughs> the three one or four one. They tweeted it themselves. Mm. It's, it's becoming a standing joke at this point. Um, but yeah, uh, a massive three points for both them teams. West Ham, fair play to them. They equalised, but again, Paqueta played up really well. Yeah, yeah. But, but like again, one of his best games Liverpool, Liverpool season, Anfield, too. and yeah, yeah. To, to Bournemouth in terms of they went one 0 up as well. Bournemouth, I'm not saying they've looked outstanding, but they're looking strong enough to stay up. Which is obviously quite a lot of people tip them to go down. Um, I was going to say one okay. thing on a. Uh, there's a ho- obviously a whole debate in the Premier League about Madison, Bruno, Odegaard. You know that bracket of midfielders. Yeah. I think Paqueta will be there at the end of the season. He'll establish himself in that um, bracket. But it happens all the time. I'll just I'll continue on that. We'll, we'll move on to the later just... games. I was going to say yeah, exactly that. Or if you look at Ward Prowse when he was at Southampton, now he's gone to West Ham, who are now a bigger club than Southampton, whether it's playing in Europe. or He's got more eyes on him, obviously, being in the Prem, not the Championship. People are noticing the difference that War Prowse makes, even if it's not him and his individual brilliance in a game, as you said, like like Paqueta, it's his set pieces will get you another five, ten goals a season. Mm. And that he, brings I a lot to he's been the most impactful signing by yeah. that person so far this season. He's got like an assist in every game, I think, or every other game now. Yeah. And, mm. uh, obviously, he's a dead ball specialist and he's, he's not bad. Obviously, well, you, you saw it against against you. But was it you got an assist straight away? Was it two assists? Yeah, was it's it? a corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corner and stuff. Yeah, and he scored as well against. City, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's up there, and um, with Paqueta, you're saying because obviously I see a lot of Paqueta. He does a. You can you can tell his IQ is obviously levels above everyone around him for West Ham. He's obviously mm. high quality, but he does misplace passes as well. And I don't know if it's because the other players are not on his wavelength. Like he sees passes, they don't make the run. The ball's lost there, or 
what it is. But if he goes to a city, like they were after him and yeah. stuff. Oh, he would have excelled. He would have excelled. He yeah. would be, as you said, the Odegaard, the Bruno level. Because you can see the quality. He's, he's already starting for um, for Brazil as well. It's mm. just a lot of gems that end up at smaller clubs that can't um, obviously can't show themselves because they are at a smaller club. Um, but yeah, moving on. Arsenal 2, Spurs 2, North London derby. Um, we, we, touched on it, we touched on it before um, before we started recording. UT said Spurs were the better team. I thought Arsenal had quite strong spells. I thought a draw was a fair result. I, I think a draw was a fair result. Mm. Yeah. I, I agree with you in terms of, yeah, in the first 30, I mean, Tottenham weren't able to actually play out, were they? I mean, do you see all the pressing? They, they, they didn't, had no ideas. The man, Madison got dispossessed. Probably Jesus should have scored, etc. The, the goal. But I think after that, near the end of the first half, it was all Spurs. I mean, obviously Madison does that. Obviously, Paul defending from Saka and it led to the Son goal, which I think three defenders, or it was Rice and the two centre backs, probably should have got to the ball before Son did. Yeah, you touched that on that because we watched the game together. You did touch on that. I, I, if you watch it back from the angle behind the goal, yes, the defenders could have got there, but it, it, it looked like a perfect pass because it actually went past Rice's outstretched leg. So I don't think there's a lot he could... And it's also, you can't really question Rea for the goal. It literally come off the foot no, of the post. Really it, it was a brilliant finish. Um, yeah, it, was, it was a good finish, but I feel like the defenders at least or someone is free Arsenal and then the one Spurs player gets the ball, obviously. obviously the, 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 the penalty as well is luck, isn't it? Well this, well, this is what I was going to say, but it was... Romero, I think, is lucky that Basuma... Was it Basuma or Saar? I can't remember who it was behind him. Because if he wasn't behind him, Romero would have straight red. Because it was going in, it would have been a, it would have been straight the nine of a goal scored opportunity handball. He would have been off. Same as it was Reese James against scored, Liverpool man, last year. Does that make a so you that would be the difference? Between, I, I didn't know that that'd be the difference between a red card and it if it's go other. if it, yeah because remember Reese James was on the line and it, his arm was down by his side but it hit him on mm. the arm and he got a straight red for it because it was it was going in. It's directly yeah. it would have gone in the back of the net. That's, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's still the rule. They've probably changed it by now. They change it every thirty seconds. But yeah, mm. if he's lucky that someone was behind him because Arsenal go two one up, doubt with the Spurs are down to ten men. The Spurs don't score by that thirty seconds after the restart, surely. You'd like to think mm. that their heads drop. It could have been a three or a four, but mm. again, just as Arsenal winning the penalty, make your own luck with the own goal as well. Spurs made their own and luck with their man placement. Georgia, yeah, Georgia loses it, they get the goal. What do you not think of that? Um, I saw a lot of it this morning, and um, on Sky they said it should have been read the Eddie and Ketia challenged. A lot of saying that red card. Hard, yeah. If Gusto is a red card, then and Ketia should be in prison. <laughs> but again, by the way, that happened at the exact same time. Like even in real time, that happened at the exact same time. So I thought that was probably the worst day of refereeing in the history of the Premier League. There were so many incorrect decisions going on, left, right, and centre, and other decisions getting exposed. Like uh, they weren't able to explain today on Sky Dermot Gallagher why Garnacho's one was a penalty. Well, it wasn't a penalty, but this was. They just dodged the question. They don't know what they're doing, to be honest, the referees. They just go along with it. Um, one thing, and also, um, what's it called? The obstruction thing, that the Man City decision, where, you know, there was a whole thing about obstruction, and then when Man United it happens to us, it was done. It was a right decision, yeah. but very interesting. What I was going to say about that game, um, that was a game in which you had Declan Rice starting. I thought Basuma was a level above him. Where is Basuma in terms of midfielders in the Premier League? Because... That was he's incredible. Just pace, right power. You can write this moment in terms of right at this moment, like he's, where he's, does he's, he... an eight, he? he's a centre mid, a, a box mm. to box. Right? He's got I've, um, five, you know? I was going to say I've, I've lost complete track of time. Was it this summer they signed him, or was it last summer? No, last, it's the summer. Previous last summer. Remember, we yeah, said he was the him, signing of the summer. Yeah, we 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 all yeah. voted him as our signing of the summer. So yeah. that proves two things: Brighton can get good, get brilliant scouts. They're signing players left, right, and centre that are selling for profit. No credit to Spurs at all there. And B, all three of us have got the best ball knowledge on YouTube. So mm. let's settle for that. Um, last thing, last thing, Dan. Um, I was going to say, I thought Arteta did make one mistake at the end. and He keeps making it. I don't understand why Kai Havertz is even put on the pitch. If he can't play in that he position, that they put him on. Just, no, they, they should have played him a striker then. You saw very clearly Eddie Nketiah is not the instinctive striker they needed at the end. I don't know why yeah, they kept him Havertz at the end might have scored. If they'd played him maybe a striker in the box, at least chuck him in there because he's not going to do what you want him to. He's not, you said uh, Basuma's an eight, right? Havertz is not doing what Basuma does at eight. So play him a striker if you want to use him. But I, I don't Any, understand. Anywhere else. Or taking, I know Havertz isn't naturally a winger or he hasn't played in the winger in the Prem really. I don't, he didn't do it at Chelsea. But Jesus into the middle, 
and get you off and have that wide. I don't understand that either. I mean, obviously with Rice, you know, it's an injury, but why do you take Jesus and not um, Enketia off? Jesus scored on them in the Champions League midweek as well. His all round game is so good. He just kind of lacks yeah. that clinical. Like his all round game is actually beautiful. Um, I was going to say 007 for Havertz as well. Congratulations. Just to just to congratulate Havertz, I get 007. Also, one final last thing. I've rated Madison for years. We're going to say it every week now because he is well and truly. He's quality. I just hope he's not injured. That looks well, good. Think... He played on for another like 15, 20 minutes. He did play on, but he did come off, but hopefully, because he, that guy's class. He, he, he did levels to Odegaard in that game. Yeah, he showed out of God. Up. Congratulations, Madison, Ooh. from Coventry to, to the Emirates. That's sort of congratulations. So, Amir, you're up next. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Pochettino working it. his magic. Chelsea, nil. Aston Villa, one. Chelsea, down to 10 men. And Ollie Watkins, mm. Dunkin' on your First team. of all, um, Chavez already made the point on the Yeah, game. it wasn't a red. I don't... Obviously, we know it's it wasn't a red card. Or well, I don't think it was. But obviously, the freeze frame... No, it wasn't. And I kind of know how you feel last season with the Casemiro red cards when they just get the <laughs> full frame. I, would say, I was taking the mick out of you, so I'm going to apologise because I understand the whole screenshot now thing because yeah. it's happened to my club now. But I'm not going to let that be the deciding factor of why we lost. We had so many chances that game, then we were so wasteful. Um, Jackson missing chances, Sterling, um, Kilwell at the end. Do you know what I mean? With Chelsea, just, I did cry out before the summer ended sign at least an experience number nine or a bagsman. Not like a 60, 70, 100 plus million, but at least someone who can who knows how to reach the back of the net. Go for it, Dan. Um, you are also strikeless for your next fixture because Jackson has now picked up five yellow cards, which yeah, means... Five. He, I mean, we've got um, Rose means... who's come back from an ACL, the only player, but I don't think he'll start. He's, he's not ready. It's not him. I, I've I've liked him for a while. He's, he's a no-nonsense, just irritate yeah. the other team. He's, even when he was at Southampton, he, he was, again, maybe his hit rate wasn't as good as it should be for playing for a club like Chelsea, but he's mm. he's there mm. and he'll frustrate the defenders. But yeah, coming back from an ACL, you can't expect him to yeah, hit the ground so running. It's a horror injury. Sterling, it's the centre forward or some nonsense like that. And also, we don't have a right back now. No right, right back is fit, so that's another. <laughs> as he's gone and you're so suspended well, and well. injured. And to be honest, on the Villa goal as well, um, Thiago Silva dispossessed. Do you know what? I think... It could be time to drop Thiago Silva. I think he could be getting a bit. The age is obviously coming into effect now. He couldn't track back after the mistake and obviously um, led to their goal. But Sanchez on the goal, a bit questionable, but he did stop us from conceding another five. So I'm not going to go into him too much. But we we are really bad. And I'm going to criticise Poch a bit as well because I think it's needed. Um, this fetish of keeping Conor Gallagher <clears throat> Minutes, I don't understand, and taking Enzo off. Long distance runner. Take oh, yeah. it, uh, probably our best winger, um, Mudrick, off and keep mm. turning on. I don't know. Can I ask you a question? Go so, for. obviously, there was a time when Potter was manager, and it was very common knowledge that asking for Potter's head would be stupid considering so much money spent. You can't just sack a manager just based on a few results because mm. obviously the problems aren't just the manager. But the same is with Pochettino. Obviously, he shouldn't be calling for his head. But there are there is a good counter argument. He's now doing the exact same thing that Potter did, and eventually Potter did get sacked. It's the same he time makes of year. He makes questionable what, in-game what would you decisions. What is the resemblance? What is the, the questionable similar... in-game decisions? Why did he take Enzo off? This is the second game now where he's taking Mudrick off. Right when Mudrick's actually Mudrick looked like a Port- proper threat. Yeah. So and there's some players. He I think Colwell played left back. Was it? Cole still is playing left back, yeah. Unfortunately, there's some things he does, which again, it's not his fault. It would be so silly to sack him, but then this is exactly what we said about Potter. Yeah. Then Potter started making these weird decisions, and look what happened. So, I'm one thing I'll say is I think Pochettino could be sacked, and there's one pathway where he could be sacked. You play Brighton in the Carabao Cup. Brighton yeah. are very strong. If Brighton knock you out of that, you've got Fulham in a derby away from home. Oh, Monday, if, yeah. If you don't win that, your oh, game right. after that... No, no, no. The game after that oh, is... It's terrible. We've got Arsenal. We've got... Yeah, no, no, listen. At that, then at that point, you have at home, you're playing Arsenal. If Arsenal beat you after that, that what I've just said, at your stadium, he has to go. It, it will be too toxic. Too much mm. pressure. Because then you'll run after that. You've got both Manchester teams. You've got Brentford. I'll, I'll run before this. And really Tottenham, game. is it not? We have so many winnable games. I mean, yeah, we've got... We've got yeah, I'm telling you, our run is terrible. We're and that really takes you into bad. December. That takes you to when did Potter get sacked? Relegation. When did Potter get sacked? No, he. I, I think he'll get sacked off. Okay. If Arsenal beat Chelsea at Chelsea, knowing they get knocked out of the Carabao and don't get a result at Fulham, Pochettino's gone for me. And then also a couple of other stuff. I don't know. Some Cole Palmer coming on in the 80th minute or whatever. 
he looked impactful, but it's not enough time. I want him to start games as well. We need more creativity. I just don't understand. And we're so wasteful as well. I don't understand why Sterling has to stay on for the 90 minutes. I don't know if it's like player power or whatever it is, but Madrid coming I, off. I is... think it's more Sterling. Sterling has had a quite a good start to the season. He has, and, yeah. To but, the whereas Mudrick, everyone memes him. Like, even from when he started. But Mudrick's been our best attacker. He's actually been their best player. But, player but, to, but, but attack in terms of. Season. of if you're looking at it black and white in terms of numbers and goal contributions at Chelsea, Sterling's a lot more impactful at the end of the day. Even the same t- even if you look at the same yeah, amount of time that Mudrick's the first been three there. Games. Mudrick didn't, didn't really play, did he, until then? But then or maybe it's his legs, mate. I don't know. But but No, Mudrick's always looked good when he's come down. It's not like Mudrick's dying of like tiredness. He's actually looked like a genuine. I, well. we I feel bad play. for him because this is just increasing his number of zero goals. Yeah, it's a double like, over double over twenty five, triple yeah. seven. Yeah, and then um, I I guess this next game we have got the Fulham game is going to be toxic if we lose this one. So. Oh no, you've got Brighton, mate. Carapal Cup, yeah, probably at your that. stadium. At your stadium, like yeah, it's yeah, it's going to be I, toxic. I didn't, to go to it. I didn't get a ticket. I didn't want to go to it. I don't want to go to it. <laughs> But I've seen oh, us beat Luton this. <laughs> but no, you're right. There's, I think there's conversations with this pragmaticness of Poch. Obviously, I'm not going to be Poch out straight away, but there is obviously differences to Potter. We've obviously created a lot more chances, God. playing bare football and stuff. Chavez, so Chavez, uh, Chavez then, if Ten Hag was in trouble, and when would you see Ten Hag being sacked? And Chavez's answer was, if he gets his first team back and they're still playing like they are. So when can... No, but he wouldn't be sacked, Dan. I don't think... Okay. So, to to be, I, the Ten Hag being sacked is all tongue-in-cheek. I say it to him to wind him up. Ten Hag has... Ten Hag's not going to be sacked. If, yeah. if they carry on playing how Trump they are with Dan. their first-team players... <laughs> You're saying <laughs> like... No, to be fair to Poch, we haven't no. got half our players as well, have we? Like, we ain't got Reece James, we ain't got Nkunku, we haven't got this, that and other, innit? So it's like... Dan, I don't so, think our fan base will turn on Ten Hag because we've seen this script too many times. So we've you like. You think both your managers will make it to the end of the season? End of the season? No, 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 not Amir can, no. Amir knows that it might not even be that he wants him out, but if that those if that scenario yeah, happens, it might not be the end of the it's month. It's too much. Oh, Dan, yeah. when you spend that much money and stuff, and it's yeah, obviously it's too much pressure. Being out is now is, is is too ropey. Just well, Poch, we... Poch, do you, Amir, do you think Poch will ever get to managing Kunku? That that's another question. He might not even get a chance. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> The only thing is, though, um, he has got injuries. Like, and Kunku was like centerpiece to everything, and he was like helping, mm. like, do you know what I mean? So, God, feel yeah. from there as well. And so, Jackson's a donkey as well for that. Jackson's a donkey. Did you see well. that thing where Potts come out and said, Before the game, I told him that strikers to pick up yellow is just please. That's don't. why he's a donkey. It's almost reminiscent of Mourinho and Balotelli. It was like, Please don't get sent off. You're my only striker. 46 minute red card. But um, last game, last game week of the Premier League match week, uh, Sheffield. Might as well have just walked off the pitch and lost 3 0. Uh, Sheffield nil, Newcastle eight. I would have forfeited the game. <laughs> Did you walk off the pitch at that point? Yeah, yeah best set piece um, merchant as a defender in the league. Brilliant. I wish we had him just because of what he can do. Dead ball specialist. He's always been that. Um, Sheffield United, they are one of those teams that make me wonder what was going on in the Championship last season. I said it was a terrible league. I said it was a terrible league, and I have you done. Don't, you always go. No, you okay. always go about okay. incredible okay. leagues. Okay, in terms of the quality, Burnley walked the league, and no one tends to walk the league. Burnley, Burnley lost three games, and one of them was to us. Uh, we took, yes, yeah, so, yeah, and we were terrible awesome. last season. We we were horrible. We still are at the minute, to be fair. Um, Burnley for Blake. Yeah, but... Sheffield and Luton are straight down. Like this league's not. I don't think there's going to be much of a it battle. Free. Oh, guys, question I wanted to ask. Um, who is the first manager to be sacked, in your opinion? I want all predictions. Around. Would it not just be the uh, Would it not be the Sheffield United one? Do you think Higgin, Higginbottom? Okay, to be fair, I, I, I think I think it will be Pochettino. I'm going to say it now. I think because I see that scenario happening, starting with Brighton tomorrow or Wednesday. Pochettino is the is. first manager to be sacked. Yeah, I think it's Vincent Company. If he carries on playing like this, I mean, like Company. They're playing well, but they're not getting results, and it's results based. No. First manager to be sacked, Pochettino. Dan, who do you think? Uh, Rob Edwards. No, but no, you know I think Luton. Dan, give I think he's thing. a hero because Luton. This like this is one point more than Luton expected this season. So congrats. <laughs> no, Dan, be honest. Do you, do you actually think it's Rob? Edwards? No, yeah, genuinely, Rob Edwards. No, you just you're just saying that because no, 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 gen- no, I don't hate. Where they're going to keep him after? <laughs> I thought I liked him as Watford manager. He, he played all right football. It was just... ah, you wanted his head as well. <laughs> Every other Watford fan did. But no, no, it isn't coming from a place of hatred towards Luton. I genuinely think it will be him. They're going to make a rash decision. I think it's the wrong decision. He got them out of the league last year, so when they inevitably do go back down, he'd be the man to get them back up. 
Um, but no, I think they'll just make no a Vinny decision. companies. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Who no, they uh, even Jordan. get? Who wants to go to Luton? There's a Premier League club. They'll probably give them some stupid bonus or something. Yeah, a relegation clause or something. Yeah. Big Sam, Sam, a- Sam Allardyce to Luton. Sam would want now. Should we go to uh, UCL now? Because there was a. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Milan, nil, Newcastle, nil to start. Well, I was going to say Milan, nil, Newcastle, nil to start with. Good um, point. I was just going to walk through a couple of them. Um, Milan dominated Milan that game. Won Milan should have won that game. But yeah. Nick Pope. No. Yeah. I have to say, there's a lot of embarrassing opinions on that game. People saying that Newcastle were poor and stuff. It's a, it's a point away from home. I don't care what teams yeah. do away from home. If you can't play poor and get a point away from home. I mean, yeah, it's good. Yeah. If it was, it's, I think it's it's Newcastle with Nick Pope. Yeah. That, point, yeah. that point is massive for, for Newcastle. Yeah. Especially, well as, well, especially as Dortmund lost to PSG 2 0, which is obviously the next big game. Young boys Leipzig, but nobody cares. Um, but yeah, the group of death. Now that Newcastle have got one more point than Dortmund and level on points, obviously, which makes them with Milan, if they can get another win. They've still got to play PSG. Still, still don't think it's going to happen. PSG is a, a free hit, but if they can beat one of the other two teams. And when they've got three attempts at it, that'll be a massive, massive win. Um, but yeah, City won, shock. Went one nil down after absolutely shitting on Red Star for, for 43 minutes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's standard. City are always going to probably win Pass every game in the group. Yeah. I, want to talk about, I want you to talk about Onana. Because he was at yeah. the game as well. Wasn't he? Um, that is, well, I, I suppose, yeah. By a four Man United three. Our own Chavez reporting live from we the were, We were in the stadium and I said like before this group started that the big game this for us will be Galatasaray away from home but that could have completely ended because Copenhagen were winning 2-0 and then red card Galatasaray came back and got a point. So the group's open better than I thought because I generally didn't think Galatasaray I didn't think Copenhagen would get a point so well done to them. Um, from the game I just I, it was yeah memories of David De Gea literally the most David De Gea-esque mistake you'll ever see to be fair to him, one thing he did do, he didn't hide behind anything. De Gea made these type of errors in big games so many times, never came out and did what Onana did after the game, which was nice to see. Um, aside from that, Onana didn't really do much wrong. So it's this This is the thing. Regardless of what you say, Onana's all-round game will always be better. So I, I'll, I'll take those mistakes, to be honest. Um, at the end of the day, it, it, it will happen. It, he's, it happens to every keeper. I just hope it doesn't happen again, uh, ideally. But for the game itself, I thought Bayern were absolutely shit. Um, I can't believe that this Bayern team is supposed to be, well, regarded as the second best team in the world behind Man City by some. They were not good. And that first one, Musiala, okay, Musiala is outstanding. There were a couple of players. Musiala, Sane, brilliant. But there's some players in there that I just thought, Kim and Jay didn't move me. There were some players I was quite surprised with how they did. But, and Kane, by the way, Kane Stinker. I, I know they beat us and they beat a very wounded Man United team. But for them to even concede three against us and to allow us to be in that game, I just thought it was they weren't as good They're as keepers, they were. Aren't it? They don't actually have a first choice keeper. There's no Neuer as that start guy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I thought we did all right. The result was definitely not reflective of the game. We were never really in it. We had like five minutes of being in it. Um, but Casemiro came out and scored a couple of goals. Ericsson, you can see it from 10 yards away, from 50 yards away, from 100 kilometers away. Ericsson is such a liability off the ball, and it's a disaster waiting to happen whenever he plays. Palistri, he was not in it. Physically, he looked like a kid has just been chucked into a pitch with men. He was not really up for it. I don't know why Ten Hag said Davies was a... I, I don't know why De- Ten Hag went for Davies right before kickoff because Davies got like an assist within five minutes. thought he played well. Um, but yeah, the Bayern fans very... Um, very timid. I don't know if they're scared of English people, but I found them to be very quiet. And I was sitting right next to them, like to my left was Bayern fans. Didn't say a single word to me. Um, yeah, uh, I think the big game again will still be Galatasaray away. That will determine between us and Galatasaray goes through. But Bayern are not anywhere near what people think they are. So you reckon they'll what go out, get through, and get knocked out? Depends on obviously who they 100%. get. Is I think Tottenham a big are... final job for them. The second they get like a PSG or a Man City, they get torn. Do you reckon they get torn apart? Like properly torn apart? I was surprised. I was shocked by how what bad is they were. Is, is it just the, the midfield? Battle? You know, no, no. We dom- that game. We dominated the first twenty-five minutes. It's then the anonymous they completely rattled the whole team. And then even after that, they them conceding the goals they did. It was surprising that it ended up being four-three. Um, they were obviously clinical, which is great, but. I don't know. Kane just felt off as well. It's seeing him, I know he scored a hat trick the next I game. I mean, uh, but... we see plenty of games of Haaland not playing well in the game or not, but getting that goal end of it with a striker. That's what mm. they look at. It's the goals and the he dodgy penalty, a... by the way. Very dodgy penalty. Hat trick on the. Hmm, I thought it was a pen. Three goals for Bokum. 
three goals to assist. I mean, yeah, look, yeah, against three goals against, against a farmer team. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but he played shit against us. Still scored. Also, it was nice to see Hoyland's first goal of his many he's going to score. 400 plus. So it's nice to be there for the first one. Uh, oh, Rashford. Is Rashford. he only got four more, four more goals this season, according to you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a ticking time bomb now. I got to see one of them. And I saw yeah. one of our four wins this season. So. Yeah. Uh, I probably touched on it earlier. Arsenal for PSV nil. Obviously, we talked about yeah. it. The Arsenal game. Obviously, you touched on Jesus scoring. So, well, welcome back. That was Arsenal's Arsenal. best performance of the season. But yeah. I think they took that performance and thought we can beat anyone. And yeah. no, no, you can't. And obviously, the, yeah. the geezer before the game crying when the anthem was always just a bit, was a bit too much over the top. Yeah. Liverpool going one 0 down and then winning three one again for the four hundred thousandth time in in recent times. Uh, Aston Villa was it three two, three two in the end? They lost, they uh, lost late, late loss. They lost and Virginia Brighton goal. also lost three two. But I'm going to end on a positive note for me. João Pedro, yes, it was two penalties, but scored two goals in Europe. He's not your player. Positive that's note for so me. Weird. I'm like a proud. That's, that's, that's like so proud weird. Dad. Dad. It's, like, it's like me celebrating De Bruyne for C. That's what he's no, doing. but that's different. Yeah, because you're a big well, club and you've got players for Liverpool. That's like me celebrating. No, that's Salah. different. It's different. It's We're a tiny club. It's nice seeing one of our ex players do well. They're your rivals. We're nowhere near Brighton. <laughs> Why didn't he stay? Marseille then. Are you supporting Marseille for Sar as well then? Yeah. Happy to see him. Burkhouse scoring <laughs> for Ajax as well. Rubbing my hands together on that I mean, one. happy for Sabitzer. He beat Man United. <laughs> 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 it's different for you guys, but I'm, I'm going to end it for, from me on that note. You two got anything else to add? Any, any no, ex-players you want to celebrate? Well, again. Oh, yeah. Again. I forgot, uh, yeah. Kudos, kudos scored. Yeah. He could have got two. It was an own goal, wasn't it? The other one. Yeah, Next week, Tottenham Liverpool combined eleven. Very quickly. And the London derby on Monday, in which hopefully Poch can get a win. So combined eleven. Wait, that, that's ages. Oh, yeah, Tottenham and Liverpool combined very really quickly. In goal, oh, Alisson, um, obviously. Alisson, hundred percent. Um, right back. And Doggy. He's left. No, he's left the left back. back. Who's Tottenham's right back? No, Pedro Porro. Sorry, yeah, no, Trent. Trent. Pedro Porro. Yes, Trent. Trent. Pedro Porro is good though. Um, centre back. back. I mean, it's Van Dyke, I suppose. Van Dyke. Yeah. I would give it to that Van der Ben guy. <laughs> no, I'm Romero. 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 He said he's the best centre back in the world. I okay. agree. Oh, even after that disaster. Okay. Yeah, Romero. In... Sorry, sorry, Scotland back. fans, but you doggy. Robbo. Nah. You want him to DM. Up, Rob? Nah, it's Robertson, then. Chill out. DM. Basuma. Yeah. Okay, we'll put Basuma. No, yeah. it's going to be Endo. Basuma. 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 Yeah, I suppose so. Hapasar and Basuma. Well, who's going to get him? McAllister? Uh, it's got be, is it Spurs Graven midfield? Birch. It's a full Spurs yeah, midfield. Spurs midfield. It's got to be. <laughs> Madison and Hapa Cam. And then, yeah, Sobersly doesn't make it. Madison's ahead of him. Uh, yeah. Salah, Salah right. on the right. Salah on the right. No, Salah Leffling. right wing. Um, Son left wing. Son left wing. Left wing. And then we'll put Darwin up top. Nunes. Darwin, oh, is he? Yeah. Another goal for him. I said 15 goals a season. What's he on now? Four? Yeah, it's a long road. Uh, ex Watford player from like back in the day, you'll record. Uh, he wasn't like, actually. But no. that yeah. is it from us this week. Thank you very much for watching. And yeah, what about and... Sancho, Dan? Uh, fraud. Get him back at the Vic when he leaves. Get him back to the car. Uh, by the way, Sancho needs to fix up at FIFA. If he's not going to play for Man United, at least win some FIFA matches. Everyone keeps beating him. Yeah, I'm uh, uh, sorry, it's not FIFA anymore. It's EASFC or EA Football yeah, yeah, Club or whatever it's called now. But yeah. that is it for us from this week. Thank you very much for watching. And until next week, goodbye.